Hello there and welcome to this, which is our 11th free webinar of the 2019 Smart Building Series. Uh, very pleased to have everybody um, listening in live today. And uh, again, today we are discussing unlocking smart building potential with the Real Estate Core Ontology. And I'm very happy to have here with me um, a guy called Eric Welling. Hi, Eric. Hi, Jim. Nice to be here. Good. And we're have very happy hello, to hello. have you. So just... Uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> Go on. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for your for your cue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll just, I'll let you introduce yourself um, in a minute or so. I just want to kick it off with um, a bit of housekeeping. Um, so Eric is going to uh, present... Um, his slides on the Real Estate Core ontology and how he's been using it with his company, iDun. Um, and then after that, we are very happy to take um, questions about what's being presented or you know anything regarding that or our research. Um, and so the way you can do that is to just type those into your uh, console, the GoToWebinar console, and I'll receive your questions here and I'll be able to put them to Eric. Uh, beyond that, we're also recording uh, this session, so that will be available later on um, through our website, memory.com, um, also through SoundCloud and iTunes and now YouTube channel as well. So I'll be sending you um, a link to the recording uh, later and uh, feel free to share that with colleagues if you think it's interesting. Um, so that's it from me for now. Um, over to you, Eric. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, as Jim said, my name is Eric Wallen. I am the chairman of the Real Estate Core Consortium as well as the CEO of Iden Real Estate Solutions uh, AB, which is a company that, that builds things on top of the Real Estate Core. I will walk you through the Real Estate Core uh, ontology, but first, the real estate core ontology um, has a background in actually a bunch of very large property owners uh, uh, that joined forces with the academy, and uh, and together we all uh, we all we saw the same problem that actually that we needed to we needed to to say solve similar things. And instead of doing this one by, instead of doing, we are all doing this by ourselves, we, we decided to let's try to join forces and actually divide the workload between us. Uh, and the real estate core is open, it's licensed under open source. It's li licensed under MIT license, which you probably know means that you, there are only two conditions. You have to attribute, you have to give us cred, and you can't sue us if the building burns down. Uh, it's no licenses, no fees. Uh, the consortium is a non-profit, as I said before, and uh, you could uh, you could use it uh, as much as you uh, as much as you want. And uh, you can apply to become a member. As an example, we have members such as very large construction companies, other vendor companies, uh, trying to keep defeat the different interest organizations uh, in, in the in very near circle. So what is driving us? Well, the, the passion we have is that we, we really want to make our buildings uh, as good parts of the smart city, to make them into good inhabitants. Uh, we want to put more or less an API on the buildings that we can connect to all the other activities that, activities that goes on in the in the future smart city um, and of course we want to do this in order to to uh, be better neighbors and make our dwellings much better and of course also to make sure that we have a profitable business uh, yeah, yeah, running and included in both the neighbors and the business uh, is of course course that we have a huge press on us for for um, taking care of the of the of the environment and the climate so what is real estate core <clears throat> it's a um, it's a common language 
similar to to uh, similar to uh, other standards. Uh, it takes. It has a very good. It has a very strong feature of not trying to reinvent new standards, but instead mapping. So we're using alignments uh, to to all already present standards and other legacy systems. Uh, in order to make it, in order not to uh, make a property owner or the suppliers to actually change all of their all of their systems, and as I said before, we see it as ex a very very important to uh, be able to support uh, to support that we actually can connect us. I mean, we are right now doing very much job with connecting the buildings to the utilities grids. Uh, we're actually doing some work with connecting it to the uh, local um, the public transport systems in order to give them information when an event is ending uh, and vice versa if there's some, some traffic blocks that the buildings can understand that. So, <clears throat> and also when designing an ontology, uh, I have been designing ontologies for, for uh, quite for many years, even for decades. And uh, the most important part from my, from my learning is that you actually know the business case that, 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 that you're trying to solve. And we, when we started out uh, doing Real Estate Core, or actually the predecessors to Real Estate Core, the, the biggest business case was energy optimization. Uh, that was that is still a very very interesting uh, very very interesting domain. It's more or less a hygiene factor, uh, but there's lots of things to do. But having had that in front of us when we started, we started to look at, at present standards. And you could, you could classify these into more or less three domains. We had the BIM, the IFC standards, the ones for blueprints, and other substandards for classifications when it comes uh, to that domain. We have all the building automation system standards. <clears throat> There are uh, quite many proper, proprietary standards from different suppliers, uh, and there are some initiatives such as Haystack and, uh, and, and Brick Schema. And then we have the third domain that has a huge impact on us, and that is all of the new IoT things that are coming. The, 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 the problem with this, now I am an engineer, that, that's my background, so you know what, I have a problem and you try to standardize it, what do you do? Well, you you take and go through all the, the, the standards that you are that you that, that applies to this domain, and then you figure out that none of them actually solves your problems. So what do you do? Well, you invent one more. I'm guilty, uh, but and here comes the but. The problems with all of these standards are that they are not made for property owners. I might be uh, stepping on someone's toes right now, but if you take BIM for example. That is for construction companies, is my, is my opinion. Uh, it's very good for, uh, for, for designing and planning and then actually building, uh, putting buildings up uh, and then also tearing them down at some stage. But they are, they are not optimal, on the, they are not made for actually running the buildings for tens of years or even hundreds of years. Uh, the same thing goes when you come to building automation systems. They are, of course, very good to have to regulate the climate and uh, uh, the lightning and access control and such a things. But they are they are not really supporting the, the main business. Actually, when you're looking through all of these, it was roughly 15 interesting standards that we are mapping to, we're doing alignments for. But when you're looking through these, you can see that the most important class is, is not present in any of these standards. As, and for a property owner, that is the the object uh, for, for for the actual lease. That's the object that we are sending our invoices from. So I think that uh, I think that I am forgiven for actually bringing yet another standard to the world. And then again, they all also lack the semantic web capabilities using. Uh, in basic tools such as formats such as RDF uh, story when you are actually starting to uh, moving in to start using machine learning and AI that you need to have a knowledge representation. So <clears throat> the main driver for the real estate core is that it's actually 
for and by property owners. It's made by property owners involved. It's actually been tried out in parallel, so we are actually put, keep putting it into use. And it is, uh, and, and uh, we actually take the property owner's perspective. And I would say, uh, which means that when you're looking at standards such as Haystack and uh, or is that more or less brick schema, they are they are lovely complements to the real estate core because the real estate core does not model in that detail how you are building putting up HVAC systems or or other systems. Uh, we are more interested in getting the data from the sensors and then also being able to to control the different the different devices uh, in order to support our business. <clears throat> and the end goal is actually to make a knowledge graph for the building to connect it. And I mean, uh, I have a, uh, I have uh, some experience from working in the media industry in the internet advertising industry. And there you could see how both Facebook and Google and a lot of others actually took the main business from the uh, from from the publishers and I would actually see that there is a huge risk that you will have the same kind of scenario with WeWorks and Airbnbs and such likes uh, that that we as property owners take a huge capital investment uh, and then then someone else comes in and actually and actually gets um, a and, 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 and take a much bigger part of the profits. So from an egoistic perspective, it's extremely, extremely important for us as, as property owners to control the knowledge graph, to control the data. And then of course, being able to let it out, to connect it to other knowledge graphs, to in that sense, create value. So if we now start looking a little bit more into the real estate core, uh, I will later in this presentation. I, I will. There will be links. There will be uh, where you can actually can go and find the information on our websites and on on GitHub. But if I was starting to looking at at the design principle of this, <clears throat> one thing that has struck us when we've been working with this is that there are extremely hard to try to set a standard that fits everyone. Uh, I mean, when you think of property owners. Yeah, property owners, they are all alike, but I mean, you have so many different types of property owners. Uh, like the ones I'm working with are represented by, they're working with, with retail and office, um, and another one are working with, with academic uh, university buildings. A third one is working with uh, residential, and we have other that works with hospitals, etc. cetera. Uh, so a very important part of the design here is that it's modular. And this means that you can actually load and unload uh, the different the different modules in the real estate core. We have the very important part, the core. Uh, that is the one that that contains all the very the important concepts such as the building structure, the devices, uh, how they how they work, event measurement units, things that are actually that we don't uh, that we don't that needs to be the same for 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 all systems um, but then we come to things such as if i just take an example when it comes to buildings then we have of course a top level where you have these where, where you have the same uh, where you have different types of, of for example room types but then when you come into when you have this um, this huge real estate owner that has lots of universities when they have not one type of laboratory but seven and that means that they could actually make an own dialect of the building and put in the needs they have without compromising uh, they can use all the other they can use all the other uh, tools and apis and everything the only thing is that if they try to uh, ex extract the data and, and suddenly there's some 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 subclass of laboratory that another system doesn't work, then then that's actually not a, a huge problem. And at the same time, they, it will support their core business. So this is the way of, and, and in the same way, you can add modules. I mean, we're working with waste companies, uh, which are which are working with doing separate modules uh, for this, which actually maybe shouldn't be a 
part of the uh, property owner's perspective. But again, they are, of course, they are of course doing lots of things in our buildings, so they can use our models for building structure components, etc. I'll move on to the uh, uh, next one. <clears throat> and specific, <clears throat> I was just going to go through two of the uh, important concepts. One is the device concept, and from our perspective, a device consists of one or more sensors and or one or more actuators. And it can actually consist of other devices. This way you could basically model anything. You could actually say that the full building is a device or you can model that an HVAC system is a device depending on your needs. And of course we haven't invented this. This is heavily uh, heavily inspired by SSM ontologies and other ontologies. Um, again, we're not trying to invent new ways to model the world. We, we, we are just trying to figure out which, which are the best parts in the, diff in, the, in, in the different ontologies. And at the same time, another very important part is how we model the building. Uh, down from rooms up to building, uh, up to building structure, uh, up to buildings and up to real estates. Uh, and down when you're in the rooms, you could actually add even more depth to it to start modeling the things that you're putting in the rooms. And this structure is also without, without uh, blushing, uh, heavily, heavily inspired by the IFC standard. The IFC is the standard for, uh, is the standard for doing all the blueprints, all the BIM modeling. And at, at, at the real estate core, you could say the the uh, continuing with the with the uh, with the concepts, the important parts that you actually are modeling with real estate core is of course the knowledge graph. That is the that is the store where we're actually keeping all the relations, how things are connected, and which sensor is placed where, and what kind of what kind of properties that sensor has. And the other part is all of these millions and millions of data observations, the, the, the telemetry uh, that we are collecting from our buildings uh, every second or every 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 hour. Our our biggest installations, I think, we are generating, as it is right now, 100 million uh, observations per 24 hours, and and we are starting with that implementation. So when when it comes to implementing this, building everything into some sort of graph engine, that is not uh, cost efficient. You, 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 you can't do this uh, at this stage. That would, that would make this, uh, it would not make it economically feasible to do this. And the part is, uh, <clears throat> and the part is that uh, you use the knowledge graph for the, you can traverse the knowledge graph and do interference in, in order to, uh, to, to give the knowledge to other systems such as machine learning or other, other types of AI systems to uh, try to figure out how things are connected. And another important part that we have seen and that we support in Real Estate Core is the alias I that we actually support that you can use many different namespaces. And this is a part of the big job of actually integrating all the different systems that are connected in our buildings. We have done an inventory a week and we have found out that we can have up to 15 different types of building automation systems. Everything from alarms at the handicapped toilets, and elevators, to climate control, access, lightning. And there are extremely many systems. And Unfortunately, um, uh, at the most times, in the most buildings, they are very, very rarely interconnected. So we have a huge, uh, a huge technical depth when it comes to actually integrating the systems. But again, the, depending on the business case, we only integrate the system that are actually supporting the business case that we have uh, up at front. Just a little bit about the real estate core development process. <clears throat> How do we do this? Well, we are very, very quite close with, uh, with the academia. 
and actually with the with the uh, we are working very very close with the uh, with the forefront of the, of, of the academic world when it comes to semantic web technologies and at the same time Time we're working very close with the property owners as well as with large industry players such as Microsoft Schneider uh, as, as the large global players that are also part in developing the real estate core and actually starting to use it uh, in order to to support the ecosystem that we're trying to do. We have a very simple uh, we have a very simple rule and that is and that is that uh, running code uh, rules everything else uh, that means that uh, if someone has something that is actually up and running in large scale that has a very very heavy uh, that has a very very heavy weight when it comes to it. we are a committee we are a technical committee so we have a process for how do we actually accept things into the master branch uh, i mean we have the github that's where we're working in if someone has any suggestions uh, for, for improvements or anything else that are needed and uh, we try to map to existing standards as much as possible uh, and this just makes it so um, and these are actually placed as separate alignment files in, as separate RDF alignment files and this makes it actually quite easy to load them it makes it very easy for a large property owner which many times have their own internal standards that you can make a, a customized uh, mapping for your for your standards for your different systems that you don't really have to share with someone else you can just use it for internal since you can load that modular so what do we have around the corner well we are just about to release the 3.1 version. It's actually, I think it's in the, I'm not sure if it's in the, it's, of course it's in the GitHub. Um, so, um, and that one will uh, will officially support accentuation, uh, which we have been working for uh, and put into real life uh, tests for more than a year. That is actually quite a tricky part to actually get it to work with all these different kind of systems and their, and their different tweaks um, but the future development is we will we will make tools for uh, api out generation and also data validation so you can validate your your implementations and your own modules uh, to, that they actually will support the real estate core we're working very very hard to actually make uh, to make an ontology support for uh, prediction and aggregates there are this of course but this is quite tricky and since we are quite many involved i think we are more than 10 heavily uh, invested uh, companies and real estate owners and another 10 that are that are just just around so we are roughly 20 different entities that are working right now and um, negotiating on, on agreeing on upon the the, uh, the different forms. Provenance, of course, will also be added quite soon. Uh, so we actually can use this to, uh, um, in the European Union, we have the GDPR that will, uh, that will uh, be a, uh, will, will put down some obstacles. But if we, we, we will, we, and there are quite, there are a very good ontology uh, W3 standard for provenance. So we are, of course, trying to incorporate that as much as possible. And just filling the filling the gaps when it's not uh, when when it's when it's not up to its uh, to solve solving our problem. And other ontologies, we are working very much with the VC3 SSN group, the SOSA and SSN group. We're working very very close with Microsoft with their uh, digital twin uh, description language, uh, with the team also VC3 team on of, of bot. We have also. Uh, some initial contacts with both BRICS and the Haystack, uh, and the Haystack crew, and we we have alignments for Haystack, and we are planning to do alignments for the BRICS schema. When we, as we said before, when we need to do to do some more in-depth modeling compared to the real estate course, and we have a very much a very large community of that uh, that put in different business cases from our members and users. 
as an example, the, for doing um, for, for doing green certification, uh, we we have that always in, already in place. And an example of that is that uh, one participant is actually doing that uh, that module, and then they will they will they will post it on GitHub, and they will propose for the for the engineering committee that this should be uh, involved in the next release. Waste management, access control, workplace. I think we have a there's a huge backlog, and uh, again, since this is a work uh, sharing uh, project, we uh, and we need the the domain expertise from all of these different from all of these different areas. So we actually try to take as much help as possible from those different companies and institutions when it comes to designing the, the different uh, the different models. Documentation and tools. <clears throat> we are working very hard on making um, documentation, and especially again, since this is for property owners, we are making these uh, these uh, requirements when we are buying a new a new construction or some sort of refurbishment. Here is an example of one in Swedish where we have a requirement for doing BIM. We have the same for doing requirements for building for building automation systems. And this is in order to actually, we are actually, uh, we are actually encouraging, very heavily encouraging our suppliers that they need to be really state core compliant in order to uh, supply systems to us. And when we can go out with together as um, as real estate owners, we have quite quite a good impact from this. And here are the links. Uh, you will get those. Uh, you will get those uh, in the documentation that will be sent after this webinar. <clears throat> we have started to make quite an extensive library of edge connectors. Uh, by that we mean that are the thing that that is the glue uh, between. The different kinds of systems that are very very common in our world, such as Schneider Ecostructure, Mudbus, etc. Lots of different companies <coughs> and some standards. Iden PropTech OS, uh, which is which I will talk about in a few minutes, has a vast library of edge connectors that we are going to uh, donate to the Real Estate Core Consortium. That is quite quite common. That other players, the job that we have done, that we are actually donating that to the to the real estate core consortium, and as soon as all the documentation is shaped up, uh, it's planned for Q1 next year, then this will be uh, this will be posted at the GitHub and will be distributed under the same MIT uh, open source license. <coughs> and we have the <coughs> our website where you will have some simple getting started, and you will have links to, uh, to the different resources. <clears throat> so, in summary, Real Estate Core is the ontology. I mean, the data model, the data schemas, which is important. It's also the API specification, and also the edge mes message format. And those together, and then of course, with some connectors in code, that will also will be, will be that, we actually have the the uh, then we have the prerequisites to actually start getting an ecosystem going. So that are the that that is actually the uh, the purpose of the real estate core to actually get an ecosystem. <clears throat> and I will I will uh, now I will sh I will go into how the real estate core ecosystem uh, how we see that one is being constructed and. To make it simple, you could say that we have, we have. A, if I start in the bottom, you could see that we have the ecosystem connectors that are developed by uh, system providers, such as Schneider. Schneider has made a real estate core edge connector that they have put on GitHub. Uh, I don't really know. I don't what license to put it under, but it should be open source. Uh, we have a quite many other uh, ecosystem building automation system providers that have, that have, have made um, that have made their connectors and they may and they have been putting those as part of when you're buying their systems 
we have the real estate core connectors <clears throat> the one that is actually the the, the library of, of the item system that will be open source very very sh uh, shortly then we have the uh, so I mean more or less the part that is, is below the real estate core logo type there that is just things that we need to that we need to have in place in order to make this happen and when you're looking at this from a real estate owner's perspective those things are just costs when you're looking on the top you start looking at the applications now we're talking about what kind of benefits what, why are we doing this what kind of um, why should we be investing money in connecting our buildings and we and one way of seeing this is that we actually have <coughs> three different types of apps we have the tenants in-house apps at uh, the company this was a human company that i will show soon that we have we are actually selling the data to tenants because they that they are using for different uh, for, for different applications we also have the property owner in-house apps and this is usually much of the energy saving parts reporting some facility management uh, support systems and then we also have the ecosystem systems apps and i mean those are of course the ones that makes uh, the thing interesting and here we actually starting to see that also large players are actually starting to putting up their apps on the other side that you don't have to buy everything from a building automation system provider everything from their plcs to their to their scada system to their gateways and cloud systems that you in order to get some of their nicer uh, predictive maintenance systems or workplace uh, creativity boosting systems so this is this is uh, it's a really interesting sector of it and <clears throat> if i'm looking that <clears throat> at the PropTech os uh, now you get a little bit a uh, little bit commercial uh, but i will be, be be very brief but i'm just taking this as an example to show you how we are actually implementing this the PropTech OS is the product of the of, of IDEN. Uh, the PropTech OS is the Windows or the iOS of, uh, of, a, of a PC. You can see it as that. It's not a building OS that is quite popular because a building OS is for me more of a SCADA system, but the PropTech OS is actually the one that actually, actually focus on the property owner's business not only making sure that the climate is, is, is running smooth and energy costs are not peaking. Um, and, uh, and, and the main case with this is actually to turn your building portfolio into an application platform that you can both take that data out from, but also you can control things in it. So how could that look? And here, since I guess we have some engineers in the audience, uh, uh, just some schema and you can see how uh, how it's built up when you're actually designing a system you have in the bottom you have building automation system UT devices other data sources such as anything from weather services to your own internal ERP legacy systems um, other things in the smart city that you connect to then you have the edge messaging interface that I was talking about uh, and then you have in the middle you have the knowledge graph and the telemetric uh, as well as the state and the access actuation and state the state is i would guess is what probably comes closest to talking about digital twins from my perspective i don't think you could say that a bim system or any cloud provider system is a digital twin you actually need for a property owner you actually need to connect your erp system your uh, blueprint drawing uh, system, your BIM archive, and your PropTech OS. I, I would say that is a good start of a digital twin. And you need to have those systems interconnected. And that is what you can do, what we are using Real Estate Core. And then on the top, you have the API to actually getting the data out. And um, uh, basically, a REST API and as well a stream API is very important when you start when you start feeding uh, data, when you have time critical things, and when you start feeding huge amounts of data for as 
an example that when we have we have several different uh, machine learning applications that need that could, that needs lots of data to work. <clears throat> and here is an example of how that could look with some real life uh, real life actors. Well, the PropTech OS is the the platform in the middle. And then, as an example, we have tenant in-house apps uh, that consumes that. We have the property owners in-house apps. Here's an example of the Fawcett Journal where they have for making a display for how much solar cell production and putting this up to the tenants just for some PR. And then we have a bunch of ecosystems apps that are actually doing everything from um, AI-based energy optimization to workplace uh, um, support. Uh, access control, uh, BIM apps have at this stage some apps that are that are uh, made specifically on the item platform, which uh, you know in order just to, to to get it going. And you see in the bottom we have just a few examples of ecosystem connectors and of item connectors, which uh, which quite soon will be real estate core connected. Uh, and an example of an application that actually was launched. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, uh, US Green Building Council. They have a green building certification that is called LEED, which is extremely important for us property owners in order for securing our financing, so we can so we can issue green bonds. And uh, this is. Ex quite tedious job to do and it's actually uh, a big chance of doing manual errors. This has been developed together with the US Green Building Council, ARC is the company, uh, their, their company that supports this. And this one is actually now up and running. So we are actually, uh, we, were, we were actually first in the world last Friday to do the, thir the 31st building that were supposed to be certified, recertified this year. So this is a thing that we are um, that we are uh, see that it wouldn't be possible if we haven't had the real estate core, and, and that is that is the enabler. And of course, we use the property core with it. Yeah. Analytics environment, an example of how easy it is to put into some internal or external consultants to use. Whatever, whatever flavor of uh, this business analytic systems that that you do, if you have everything, uh, if you have everything on real estate core, and since you also have the business perspective of this, you can quite easily make uh, a very inexpensive and very easy make reports for the organizations for 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 energy. This is an energy example, but also for facility management. And I will start rounding this off, and I would just try to uh, just give a uh, some small teaser and, and heads up for next Friday. We have another webinar. We're actually we are actually showcasing uh, one of our uh, one of our one of our bigger installations. Uh, it's uh, a big office, uh, and uh, we are doing. We are have, and the thing is that we are we are we are running five or six different vendors, and the thing is that none of these different systems that we have been running are are unique. The unique part is that everything is run on top of real estate core. That means that when we added, we have added like a predictive maintenance company to this that are doing predictive maintenance on the pumps. It took us half a day to get them up and running to get access to the API and get the data. So we see that using using uh, real estate core and the PropTech OS gives us incredibly scale advantage. We can scale this ext extremely fast. We we make we help the the if the if it's a small supplier we help them or actually the large one as well to make a connector and then we can actually apply this. Or on hundreds of our buildings, and also our, our our colleagues in the business can use them the same. So 
If you're interested, here will we go into depth to see how a large-scale implementation with uh, several different uh, vendors and different types of systems are being connected using real estate core and property core. So that was, I thought, I think I am fairly good in time. So uh, that was uh, my presentation. I don't know if you have any questions, please, uh, please uh, give them to to Jim. Absolutely. Yes, thank you, Eric. That was extremely interesting. And you are correct. We already have plenty of questions. Um, so we can go we can go through all of those. Um, we have uh, a good 20 minutes. So um, anyone else, if you uh, if you put your questions in now, I'm sure we can get them answered. Um, first one for you, Eric, um, someone's asking here, how does this, how does real estate core compare and contrast with uh, Project Haystack 3.4, 4.0? Okay, the uh, the 3.0 or the 3.x uh, ones, uh, that one I've been uh, been working with quite much. That is, uh, you could see some similarities to to the real estate core project and to to that when it when it comes to setup, but that is more of a tagging standard. I mean, um, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I guess that the, the Haystack 4.0 is actually the result of the of the planned merger of the um, of bricks and uh, of brick and Haystack that was planned, I think actually through the this time of the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so so the Haystack, we are mapping to Haystack uh, 3.0, uh, but that is as you know, it has excellent support for for API and descriptions of the API and the formats, but it's 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 not the semantic. It's not the semantic. So I was extremely happy when the Haystack 4.0 came, which is an RDF standard. I've been looking a little bit on that one, but uh, the way I see it right now is that it's not as expressive as the BRICS and not as expressive as the Haystack 3.0. But that could be my that, my, my lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that is really interesting, and uh, we will uh, we will definitely do an alignment. Uh, it, it took me, of course, I spent some time of, of of reading up on the haystack. But when you are actually into this, you do it in a day usually, and especially if you're working with someone from the other side, then you do it really, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. I thought your description at the start made a lot of sense, where you were talking about. Um, real estate core or property owners not being represented and and what you you know your knowledge or the knowledge graph you can present with real estate core is from from that perspective a data model for property owners is is that is that right um I, do i understand that correctly <laughs> yes that is as i said before if you're looking and now you have to excuse me, but when I looked last time in the Haystack 3.0 and, and, and in the 4.0, there are no mentioning about leases uh, or contracts, um, which is, of course, is extremely important for, our prop for us property owners. And I mean, that is the thing. And at the same time, it's much more expressive when it comes down to describing how you actually are running HVAC systems. But I think that is how we see the, the real estate core fits very, very nicely together with BRICS and Haystack 4.0. That they have much more expressivity when it comes to technical parts. Mm -hmm. And we are actually focusing much more on the on actually making sure that this makes the life and the business better for the property owners. Great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing these uh, things come together, I hope, in the end. Uh, next question for you. Um, does this solution, so I assume that's uh, talking about real estate core, require on-premise hardware to aggregate and transmit data from the site? Um, how do the connectors you have developed work? Um, maybe you could elaborate a little uh, bit on that. Well, yes. You could basically see when we are connecting buildings, we do it on three different levels. We can do it on hardware in the buildings. Uh, there could be some special demands uh, that there uh, for the application we are running and the and, and I mean the, the redundancy. But basically, if you have systems such as Modbus TCP, 
and I actually think you have the same problem with BACnet IP, uh, then you need to be physically connected. We have had someone that has been trying to route this, but they haven't actually succeeded. But when we have when we have uh, automation system that can be routed, then we prefer to put it in either the private cloud of the property owner or at some public clouds or Amazon. Uh, but it, it depends on the business case and also the building automation systems if, they, if that sets any limitation. But we, we are doing all three different types. Okay. Uh, another question here. Um, when um, or how did it come about with the, the Schneider made a real estate called Connector? Uh, what is um, the relationship with Schneider and, uh, and real estate call? Uh, I'll make a long story short. It actually started the with with telephone plant. It actually started the summer of 2018. It was one and a half year ago when actually Schneider uh, uh, introduced. Uh, since Vasa Kjolnan is, I think it's on the top five of, in Europe of large property owners, um, they, and they are of course running lots of Schneider systems. Uh, Vasa Kjolnan was invited to meet. Jean Pascal Tricot, the global CEO of, uh, of Schneider. And uh, we were actually bold enough to actually tell Schneider, and, uh, and the head of the R&D of the EcoStructure was in the same meeting, and we actually told him that we think you should, should do this. And he said, and he said, yeah, good idea, let's do that. And um, then Schneider did it. And you can, this is the, what we're looking at now, right? Telephone plan uh, development. So if anyone's interested yeah. in learning more about that, then there's this webinar next week, which you can sign up for there on the link. Uh, another question. Yeah, telephone plan. Yes. Another question for you, Eric. Facility smart grid information model, um, called, which is ASHRAE FSGIM, is an ISO standard. Um, is there any interest in talking to the ASHRAE guys behind this um, from your perspective? <clears throat> there could definitely be. I, we have contacts with the ISO committee that are doing the next IoT standard, and we actually have a huge interest and in, in, in working with different facility management companies. I think they automate things and they need standards. So I think that could probably, I'm not familiar of the ASHRAE version of that one, but I have been working with some other facility management standards uh, that we are actually looking on quite much too, because that is a big cost for us as property owners to, I mean, to, to run the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I, I'd love to. <clears throat> get, in, get in touch with that. Yeah, it sounds interesting, doesn't it? Again, like as you were saying, this is uh, the, the the scale of this, and and you know, it being able to um, look at buildings from the property perspective, and then I guess we've also got the city perspective as well. So that's um, that would be interesting. Um, yeah. One question here: um, What do you think about brick schema, and how soon can we expect an alignment between brick and real estate core? I think the brick schema is lovely. And actually a colleague of mine that is a researcher on RISE, that is a, 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 a very large industrial institute uh, here in Sweden, he is right now setting up and he is working on, on, uh, on alignments there and actually also uh, looking very much on the data, all the data that, that brings us. So I think that is not that far away. Uh, and I think it would be great to actually get in touch. I think actually he knows, I don't know if he has already been in touch with him, but I think he, he has contacts with Brick. Some okay. of the people on Bricks. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, anyone else out there who's got some burning questions for Eric, then um, please, uh, please put them in. Um, I've got um, some things I wanted to um, discuss as well like um i think if we if, could we go back to the slide the the wireframe diagram showing um nearly there this one 
Or which did you mean by bioframe? Uh, no, I actually meant the one that, that showed the, um, uh, the knowledge graph in the middle. This one? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, the, the one towards the end of the, uh, the, um, the presentation. Oh, I, mean, I mean, my question was, was so... yeah, yeah, sorry, was, was really like That's around, um, no, but, but it, it, it doesn't okay. matter. I think what, what my question is, is really sort of, um, you know, if there are sort of people who own property on the line or, um, you know, coming at it from that perspective, like what can they really expect um, from this? And you sort of, you know, if they're asking themselves, like we've got to invest some time in understanding this um, and putting it together, like what, what really is the, you know, the, the business case, right, for, for, for creating yeah. this kind of knowledge graph of their buildings? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, as I said before, we, when we started this one out, we energy in it still a, a, a very important business case. The second one that actually started to pop up was uh, utilization, understanding how the our different our, our, our properties are being used from uh, everything from cleaning to from financial perspective. But I would say the one that has actually made the largest business impact is the certification. It's quite expensive to do this, and it's not just this, this uh, lead certification, it's quite expensive to do all these kind of certifications. And they are, I mean, they are, they are, they are like, they are like as made for doing automatically. It's quite easy to do this automatically. So I would say that the major business cases that we actually have now that drives, that drives this forward, is certification and energy is of course a very very strong second and uh, <clears throat> because uh, and of course that is connected you need to optimize the energy in order to to get better performance out of the buildings so you can get them certified in a higher level and get a better better conditions for you or for your finances Okay, and then that was interesting. And obviously, you, you, men you mentioned about LEED, and w we, most of, I'm sure, most people out there know the LEED standard, and you know. And then you actually sort of said that that was that could then, depending on the, that LEED certification and what level you get, that would depend on 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 financing as well. So there is a a direct financial relationship there. Yes, uh, because when you are issuing green bond bonds. You are actually making a promise as a property owner uh, that you say that your portfolio will consist of this uh, many, th th this value of this many buildings, and they are, and they are actually having this at least this standard, this certification standard. And uh, when you are issuing green bonds, of course, you are of course paying a little bit less dividend on those. So, so it has it has quite a large impact. And what is actually happening right now? is that you could see the largest fund in the world, the one that is built up on all the oil money from Norway, the oil fund that owns 1.5% of, uh, of all the stock markets around the world. But they have actually taken the decision to stop investing in petroleum products. So I think that we are expecting to see quite a surge for green bonds and uh, then if we can certify more of our buildings and we can do that much more cost efficient and faster we see that as a huge opportunity to maybe we can even pay even less dividend uh, if, if it starts becoming a shortage of, of green bonds on the market mm -hmm. so that yeah. is a that is a, a much bigger business case than energy savings yeah yeah agreed um and then a, a final one from me. Um, again, it was a slide towards the end, and I, it showed that there were sort of the three things that make up um, this one here. Um, and there you mentioned API specifications. So could you sort of elaborate a little bit more on that? I think it's very interesting. Um, are, you, are you saying that yeah. when, that like let's say you're collecting data from these, um, from the edge connectors or the devices that are feeding into you know your platform, but are you then able using um, your knowledge graph to then be able to um, 
uh, also create your own APIs, which are, can be exposed to to other you know other software systems. Yes, and actually, actually now, I, I, uh, if you start looking at the um, at the GitHub, you will not find that API specification that easily, and that is also uh, that is just about to be officially launched right now. The committees are. The, the, our, the, the committees are just are just tuning. Or the people that are working, the engineers are just tuning um, the, the the last pieces. But we have been running this, as I said, for roughly 20 different vendors for more than a year. Uh, but these are extremely important in order to get the ecosystem going because this is what makes. If you are making an application for one platform, you can actually it's, it it will actually work on another one. If you are investing as a property owner in uh, these edge connectors, and you are and you are buying a service from from uh, from from Iden, and you and if you want to use someone else, you want to run your own platform or you want to run it somewhere else, then you can actually switch. Uh, so you are actually protecting your investments, and that's why we we are. That's why we're working so hard on getting API specifications that are uh, the same for everyone. Uh, mm. So you will get this interoperability. So you don't have to redo it when you are changing some supplier, some energy optimization uh, application or tool or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then also, of course, that the payload must be the same. The, the message format must be the same as well. Yeah, a um, couple more questions have come in for you, Eric. Um, has anyone used the real estate core ontology in Canada? <clears throat> not to my knowledge. Uh, I have not, but um, no, not to my knowledge. They can be the first then. <laughs> <laughs> There's a slot there for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and I think a final question here we'll take is uh, just about your webinar, um, which seems to be it's going to be quite early uh, in the morning in the US. So there's a question about will it be recorded and distributed to those that are unable to attend? Yes. Good. Okay. Yes, it will. And it will be available from the website as well. Hmm. Good. And I think that's that's going to be a, a good a good chance there to... Um, uh, to find out more, some sort of like a real world example of how you guys have used this and um, how what the potential is, because I think that um, it, it really, really is something that could could be um, fascinating and very, very useful for property companies who want to manage all of this, you know, data. I mean, we're seeing a lot of a lot of vendors now who are selling, you know, um, services and software platforms that you know to create data but we've, they've also got to be able to uh, to understand that data and, and manage it and, and get actionable intelligence from it so anything they can do to um, you know be able to interpret it and have models for it I think is going to be extremely useful yeah. and, it, and it's it's very much about scaling from our perspective, not doing one uh, little point-to-point -point solutions or single solutions. It's it's about scale mm -hmm. to do this yeah. in, in our in our in our big portfolios. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I see you've put on your final slides. So that they, I guess, are the ways there that people can um, interact with you if they want to. Yes. Good. So your email uh, address. Please feel free to to to, to email me. Good. And um, again, um, as I said previously, we've recorded this. So we'll be putting this uh, recording up on YouTube and on SoundCloud. And you'll find those links on the website. I will also um, include the GitHub links um, from earlier so you can see um, the code uh, for Real Estate Core. And uh, I'm sure Eric wants to encourage you all to go and test it out and uh, incorporated into new projects. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, you're very welcome. And um, of course, thank you to you and thank you to everyone who listened today. Um, again, like, you know, if you want to get hold of uh, Eric, um, please email him. And again, likewise, myself, um, you can reach us through our, through our website, memory.com. Thank you, everybody, for listening.
See you next month. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.